I'm not going to even worry about convincing anybody to, be, to do it, to do something. I'm not going to beg anybody to be here. You know, I'm not a college coach, and I don't have to recruit anybody. If you're all about stats and numbers and your, your stat line and how many balls you catch necessarily, and that's all you care for, then there's a lot of other teams you can go play for, and we'll be looking forward to lining up. Listen, we live, we learn, we grow. Sometimes you have to pivot on certain things that you say because it seems to me with the signing of Odell Beckham Jr., some may call this a desperation move, but hey, the Ravens had to do what the Ravens had to do. In 61 yards. So the big news coming from the castle today is Odell Beckham Jr. is officially a Raven. He signed his contract and they had his introductory press conference today at the castle in Owens Mills. And if you were paying attention, the first thing that you notice is when they stood up to take pictures, Odell held up his jersey and it had the number three, which was previously owned by James Prochet. So does that mean James may not make this team or does it mean James is changing his number possibly to number zero, as in the number of touchdown receptions that he has in the NFL? I joke, I kid. But this was your typical Ravens press conference where they talked a bit, shared their feelings on certain topics and issues, but you really got nothing substantial out of it. The only thing that we could take from this was Odell is not going to guarantee he's not Joe Namath in anything about Lamar Jackson signing with the Ravens. Now, he spoke about how he wished and he hoped they talked. You know, he wants to play with Lamar. Of course, that is the draw for coming to the Ravens, catching passes from him, being that when he was growing up, Michael Vick was his idol. He met him, and Lamar is just the right-handed version of Michael Vick. Now, in my opinion, he is a better quarterback, but that's up for debate. So the first question off the bat, aside from how he was doing, was what does he feel about Lamar Jackson being his QB1? Pretty much he let him know, I can't call it. I just came here to play with whomever. The Ravens showed me love. They showed him the bag, but something has to be going on. Something behind the scenes because a player of his caliber, a player of his name, just doesn't sign with a team that doesn't have a quarterback situation settled. Not only do we not have a quarterback controversy, we technically only have one quarterback on the roster as of now being Anthony Brown Jr. Tyler Huntley hasn't signed his tender. Lamar has not signed his franchise tag. So why would you come into a situation not knowing who is going to be throwing you the ball, especially speaking upon the fact that he wants to win? He says he wants to win multiple rings. He loved the Super Bowl ring that he got last year, but it was bittersweet because he was on his way to Super Bowl MVP, but then he tore his ACL once again. So that bears the question. Is OBJ out here matricing us? Is he out here ducking and dodging and just, hey, Lamar question, Lamar question, Lamar question. I know the answer, but I'm not giving it to you. Or does he genuinely not know? Now, friendship aside, this is a business. And I understand that everybody says, hey, they hang out together. OBJ was uh, rooting for him once he got drafted. Been friends from afar. But admiration can only take you so far, especially in the competitive world of the NFL. So it might be something he's not telling us. Hopefully, this signing is an indicator of what's going to happen in the future. Even though he said, I have not received any assurances from Lamar that he is going to sign with the team. Now, on March 2nd, Lamar did ask for a trade. Does that still stand? You know, the Ravens got a little desperate here and tried to say, look, Lamar, we're we trying to get you some stuff that you need, some stuff that you want, some stuff that you asked for. You wanted a new OC? Done. You wanted a name wide receiver? Done. But I think early this morning, someone said that Lamar's number one weapon is going to be his bank account. And I concur. Or he said it best, still don't nothing move but the money. But as I've stated before in previous videos, I don't think Lamar is all about the money. It's about respect. And to him, that may be one of the more important things. And a word from my sponsors, B Squared. Make sure that you hit my man up Check out this website right here to get some deals. 15% off. Use the code HENDO15 so you can get yourself some summer gear. It's starting to get hot outside. You want some flip-flops, some shorts, some t-shirts. You want to go to the beach. He has all kind of apparel that you're going to need for the summertime. So make sure you hit him up and buy some of this dope gear. OBJ stated that he wanted to be somewhere where he was wanted. But he felt like that organization wanted him. Not a situation where we're glad to have you. 
and I can understand it. You know, some teams are glad to have you because you bring a star power, you bring a media presence that kind of uplifts your team, puts them in the spotlight, get some more primetime games. There are very few teams that literally want you to be there because they feel like you could be a part of a family, a part of something greater than just football. And he said that he felt that having a conversation with Steve Bishotti. He said they didn't talk about anything football related. It was just a man to man conversation. They were chopping it up about life and especially him being a new father. There are certain things that people who are older can give you a little bit of wisdom on. And when people show you that they care about you outside of the business portion, that makes for greater relationships. He also spoke about the relationship that he had with Todd Munkin, saying that they had a fantastic relationship in Cleveland. It's just that it was probably not the right place, not the right time. And that is the place where careers and coaches go to die. So it may have been something else, but he said they have a good relationship. Harbaugh said, hey, he believes Monk is up there drawing up plays right now, trying to get things for Odell to get involved, to get him one-on-ones pretty much speculating that we're going to have a passing attack that we may not have seen in a long time. And for you new Ravens fans or Lamar fans, so have you, we had a very prolific offense our first two years coming back into the league. So we've seen a couple of things here and there, but for you newer generation or you younger fans before the run dominance. Yeah. We haven't really seen a dominant passing game with this organization. Odell said he came here to win a championship with Lamar Jackson, and that is his main focus. And speaking of Lamar Jackson, of course, you know, there were many questions about him. So they asked EDC, have they spoken to him since the Odell Beckham signing? And he stated he had not spoken to him, but they've had conversations. I'm guessing Skype, text, carrier pigeon, something happened. But he says he's had conversations with him since. The trade request has come in and things are progressing as they're progressing. So we know no news possibly may be good news. I'm not for sure. OBJ was also asked about the possible tension or relationship with Marlo. And he said that he spoke with him and it is what it is. They're just going to go compete, make each other better. Iron sharpens iron. So there are going to be no issues there. You know, uh, from what we know, there have never been any issues with OBJ having any problems with teammates. So all in all, what we learned from this press conference is the main thing is the main thing. Odell came here to win a championship. John Harbaugh kind of backtracked on his words and we still have no word on Lamar Jackson. So until next time, y'all.